Yes, we Yes, we have our Pommy friend who is over in Pommy land. Lee, how's the weather over there, mate? Absolutely freezing. I can promise you that like late last night when I was doing my clinic over here, I had three layers on. I had a, this I I had this T-shirt on actually or, or something similar, my hoodie, and I had a gilet on top, and I was still proper cold. It was, And they were all laughing at me. They were all laughing at me as they're walking around in their T-shirts and, yeah. Yeah, well, um, we noticed that it might be a bit too cold over there. John wanted to make it permanent and give you a bit of a boogie board situation, but anyway, we couldn't get to <laughs> Well, if we can hurry up with this interview, I've got to get through these shelves here just right behind me. I mean, you know, you know when people do these interviews, they tend to do bookshelves behind and make them look intelligent. Well, I'm not hiding anything. Look, there's all this all this liquor here. So if you could just hurry up, we've got an interview today. Yes, <laughs> I hear you. It to me. I hear you're very time poor in many situations, Lee. <laughs> it, it's too early in the morning. The strongest thing I'm having is coffee at the minute. So, <laughs> All right. Well, mate, you reviewed the Sunshine Coach Falcons win over the Mackay Cutters on the weekend. What have you got to take us through today? Well, because we did defence last week, Taylor, I, I decided to have a look at an element of the, of the attack. So I'm trying to do things as we go along. And today... I just want to talk about the Sunshine Coast Falcons. Good ball. So for those that don't know what good ball might be, uh, basically it's colloquially known as the area sort of 30 metres away from the opposition the opposition goal line. So as you're attacking, personally as a coach, I call it anything over the halfway line. Um, the sort of point I'm trying to get across to the, to the viewers this time is that this is a very well-coached side. It's just that the coach might have a bit more work on reinforcing the way they play moving forward because um, I'm going to show the guys a few clips now which are basically the first lot of good ball sets that they that they and they are actually spread over the half because the, the opposition put them under quite a lot of pressure and a lot of the game was played on the, on the other side of the field. But there's some clear deterioration of, of what they did. And I guess what I'm saying to the viewers is that Players are humans, and even though they've got a, a good structure or a good skeleton to work to, sometimes they'll get carried away in the middle of a game and just need the coach at half time to fix it. And I think this is what might have happened here. So another very well-coached side, um, but the, basically the attacking sets go from something like 8 out of 10 to about 4 or 5 out of 10, which is, which is human nature. So... If I can share the screen with you, my friend, um, and yep. we'll go from there. Let's do it. Roll the tapes, Lee. Now, watch the Falcons. So, as you know, Taylor, I like to my teams to set up on the scrum line or roughly on the scrum line when they're attacking. So straight away, we're looking at we're looking at defensive bodies in the screen. So without even widening the screen, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six. We can see a head popping out here, so that'll be seven. So that yep. means the majority of the opposition defenders are in the screen, which means there's less of them not in the screen. And my guess, and through uh, our combined rugby league knowledge, we would think that the left of the screen is going to be a bit more sparse. Mm -hmm. So what the Falcons do, though, which is quite smart, is they you will notice number six here as a front man and a back man. Uh, colloquially known as a block play, um, and they go into the line here. What that does is it asks questions of the defence. You will see the fullback here is actively pointing, telling defenders where he wants to go. I don't think it's quite working because he's pointing that way and his number eight mate's going the other way. But um, this now makes the opposition defence make a decision. So even though I got excited and said there was space on the other side, here is now evidence of a plan. They're getting to play the ball in the middle of the field. The opposition defence are having to move laterally and make a defensive decision. How many on the right of the play the ball? How many on the left? Now, here we have the block play again, more evidence of good coaching. Now, this is the key one for me. I'm just pressing my space bar to stop the tape. Now, look how many opposition defenders are stuck on the short side. Can you see that, Taylor? Yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I can see a boot of a six as well. That's right. So common sense suggests that a quick shift to the other side of the field now is going to pay some dividends. Would you agree? Absolutely. We've also, 
we've also got, as the, as the screen is paused, we've got number seven in defence on the floor. So oh, yes. he does, That's right. you know, so we've, we've even got somebody else seven. sort of half tied up. Yeah. So uh, quick shift, good options around the ball, couple of dummy drop-offs inside, there's blocks, there's this, there's that everywhere. Look at that. That's brilliant. Now, as the sets roll on, you'll see some slight deterioration, but because the Falcons have got some very good footballers, what can happen early in the season when you're still trying to get your um, combinations right, Taylor, is if you've got good players, sometimes you can take the wrong decision and they'll still make a half break, a full break or score a try. Mm-hmm. Right. So I remember when we were playing, um, I remember James Tedesco hitting Michael Tonner on a short ball when he shouldn't. But because Michael Tonner was such a big bull when he ran the ball, it just blasted through everyone. And yes. there's a bit of evidence in this in the Sunshine Coast Falcons. Now, they've made a bit of a break here. So my golden rule is when you make a break, shift the ball to the other side of the field. And again, more evidence that the Falcons are, are switched on in this regard. The ball gets quite quickly to the other side of the field. Um, you could argue he maybe should have given the ball there, whatever. What I want all the viewers to see again, because of that quick shift, look how many opposition defenders have had to rush over to the to the right side as we look at the street of the screen. So the Falcons are making their opposition run around the field and chase them in defence, which is a, a great ploy. And they, they just start to get a little bit unstuck here. I would have liked to have seen the ball being shifted to the other side of the field. But again, as you can see, there that is a carbon copy of the first set that you've just seen. Yeah. They're trying to put the ball in the middle of the field and set them up. And again, this is where I just think they've got a bit more room in their evolution, Taylor, as a team and in terms of coaching. And it ends up they get a penalty out of that anyway. Yeah. Get, you get penalties quite often because the opposition are at sixes or sevens because you're running them around. Yeah. As this as these clips go on, I think they lose the way a little bit. And this is why I reckon the halftime chat from the coach was really good. It's a block play fest, isn't it, mate? Yeah. But can you see that can you see they're playing they're sort of running overs a bit now? The what happens, Taylor, is when I mean, they when see, sorry, go on. It looks like they can see space. Um, and they're just trying to run overs to get to the space without letting the ball do the work for them. That's right. So sometimes a coach needs to intervene and just say, before you see that space, get into real good shape, spread out, get good field balance, and then you can attack it from a wider position. And also, the subconscious cues that happen in a game, the the, the opposition defence is really panicking. And the flip side of panicking is that the, the, the attackers, the Falcons, are really excited. So they're all getting excited. Yeah. And sometimes they think they're seeing space when they don't. They've gone down a short side here, and basically the opposition had the numbers. But this is what I'm saying about them having good players. They shouldn't have gone down that avenue, but look at the inroads they've made. Yeah. Now, if I pause the tape there, Taylor, where should the ball go next? I think the ball should... Oh. Go to the right-hand side, don't you? Because they've got one, two, three, four, five, six in this play alone. Actually, I think seven. I think there's another one on the legs. Yeah. So, so to me, to me, it's just common sense. I just think they just. It's a, it's a bit like what we saw in the defense last week. It's seven or eight out of ten. It just needs tidying up yep. a little bit. Bit, bit more reinforcement in training. The opposition weren't too bad at killing the rook at times too, even when they're in bad. And they kick the the. They're, Says we're going back to this middle point, whereas sometimes I think they've got to back themselves to shift, to shift to the other side of the field. So, and then the the old crash ball, which uh, I think I sometimes think when you resort to that, when you resort to that, you you sort of left with with no other option in your head. So, mate, uh, I did have another clip, but I think I've, I think I've told the story there basically yep. in in the in those clips, and I think. Uh, the thing I want to get across to the to the viewers is that your players, even when they're very well coached, as they clearly are there, they are human beings and they get carried away. And yeah. the older a player is, it's a bit harder to teach them to, to back their instincts all the time. It's a longer journey on the training field. And there's yeah. plenty of structure there, but you can see the players have got the leeway and the freedom to play what they see. Um, so, mate, they're going to be it. They're all thereabouts again. Um, they're, they're second in the ladder, I believe, right now. And unless the internet over here isn't working properly because of the fact I'm on the other side of the world, maybe it's the wrong way around, you know, because you're down <laughs> under, maybe the, maybe the second bottom. But, um, mate, it's clear they're going to be a good side. They're going to be in the mix. And I think there's a bit of uh, room there for the coach to improve them even more.
Absolutely, mate. What a great analysis and breakdown. Thanks for that, Leo. I appreciate it. Now, uh, when are they sending you back here, mate? Are they are England still doing that thing where they send the worst of the worst to Australia, or what are they doing? Well, they used to call, charge us a tenner, didn't they? <laughs> Ten pound pom. Now, that is a perfect segue, Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> I'm doing a coaching seminar on Friday, and guess how much it costs if coaches want to turn up in Tangle with an Oldham? Ten pounds. Ten pounds. So ten pound used to get you to Australia. This week it gets you to Saddleworth in Oldham. <laughs> Sounds like play money, monopoly money. Ten pound—that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> May as well still be playing with shillings over there. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's um, yeah. I've got a coaching seminar this week, so pl- players' clinic for the first three days. I'm coaching Wigan Warriors women on Thursday, so they'll clearly be world champions soon after I finish with them, and then. Um, uh, coaching seminar on Friday and then I think on Saturday I'm going to clear this top shelf well mate that's the mark of a true coach if you can make a Pommy team world champions you're doing well <laughs> so again Lee's from rugbyleaguecoach.com.au if you uh, want to get some coaching tips some advice you want to jump onto one of his sessions uh, make sure you hit him up uh, he's got some quality work and he's world renowned as we can see thanks for your time Lee cheers mate